hear next may be controversial. The views expressed by the show host or their guests are their own and shall not be construed in any way as recommendations or endorsements by My790 AM. Personal perspective expressed by show hosts in no way expresses the opinion of My790 AM's owners, management, or employees. You have been warned. Welcome to Wednesday. Uh, I don't know. We may be having... Can you hear us? Yeah, I can hear me. I can, I don't know. I can hear you. Yeah, loud I, and clear. Good, okay. good yeah. deal. James, welcome back. You were sick. What's up, break. buddy? I'm glad to be back. Yeah, what's the deal, pickle? What's shaking bacon? <laughs> we missed um, you, James. Thank yeah, you. Did. I miss being here. I listened to you guys, though. Did Boy, y'all were ruthless. Taylor. We, Poor kid. You mean Trevor? Timothy? <laughs> <laughs> Tyler? Tim. Uh, yeah. <laughs> oh, you guys were just, I'm like, are y'all really doing that to my to my last minute well, guy who came in and covered me? Well, we warned him ahead of time well, thank um, you. That, that, that we were going to play that. Can you not hear, Derek? It's okay. But, but you can't hear. <laughs> you don't need to hear anything anyway. Um, we'll just try to figure out where you're connected. I think you're in this one right here, so we'll just keep moving. Um, anyway, so uh, uh, welcome to Wednesday, and uh, we're glad to be back, and we're glad that James is back, and uh, uh, we did. We, we tortured uh, Taylor last week. We left one name one, one name off the list. We, we didn't use the name Trav- Trayvon, but um, we talked about it. Yeah, I know. You, it, it, Ty just sighed at me. Um, Anyway, uh, we got a, a good uh, set of topics this week to uh, to cover. Um, but actually, uh, one of the things that I wanted well, let me let me do the let me give you some numbers first to call. If you want to talk to us today, give us a holler at one eight hundred four three seven five one two one. Call that if you're a national caller. Uh, we're simulcast on the internet, so we got people listening out there that are all over the place. It's really interesting to see some of the feedback we get online. Um, and also, if you're local uh, here in the uh, beautiful Central Florida area, you can get us at 352-787-9523. That's 787-WLBE. Um, and you can reach us on that one, and you just blew my ears out. Um, and so uh, also, if you want to, you can uh, reach us, uh, uh, find out how to connect with us online, uh, see the simulcast, all that good stuff at uh, thatcompany.com slash talk. Uh, we're doing some hashtags out there and you can get to our Facebook page and you can interact and ask questions that way. And we're monitoring that live. So if you want to leave us a question there and, and are too shy to call in and speak to us, that's fine. Also, if you don't want to just listen to our wonderful voices, you can see our gorgeous faces by <coughs> going online. <laughs> yeah, it's a little scary. Uh, last week I was in my birthday suit. This week I am not. Um, cause last week well, I'm glad I missed birthday. that. Yeah, I, uh, I am too. Uh, that was easy. <laughs> <laughs> when did you get that button? Oh, Somebody boy. brought that to me. I said the other day I'd like to have one. And oh. I, did, I needed to get one. And we've well, got we've got came. we've got one of those at the office that says things that you can't put on the air. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> yeah. Anyway, uh, so we've got a couple of different topics that we're going to jump into this week. But I actually, you know, we prepare with our our show hosts here every week before uh, the show um, and talk about what we're going to talk about. Uh, but this week I decided to um, uh, d- drop a topic on them that they don't know is coming. Uh, but it, it, I, I think it's good for our listeners. Um, You're shooting from the hip. Yeah, shooting from the hip. Bang. Well, I'm surprising them a little bit. I didn't give them a chance to prepare on it. It's going to be kind of off the cuff. And that's fine because I don't the topic matter that we're going to go on to, um, I think they're experts on the topic matter. And that is, I'm not sure our listeners know who the heck we are. Um, and so, you know, I want to kind of do a little bit of an introduction of the people that are, sit around this table for the last, we, we, were, we don't even know how long we've been doing this now, eight or ten weeks or something like that. Um, you know, uh, who, who, who are you people and why do you think the way you think? And, uh, you know, uh, why is there a Democrat here? I don't know. Um, and should we eject <laughs> Who is them? that? Yeah, exactly. Oh, 
Um, anyway, so I kind of start with myself. I, you know, you, you hear my voice on this all the time, and I, I'm the one that yammers the most. And I'll try to keep my part of, part of it short. But I, my name's Ken, Ken Knorr. Uh, we're doing the radio show. Uh, I'm an entrepreneur. In 2007, I started a company called That Company. Actually, it, didn't, it was a different company's name. At that point, we rebranded uh, in 2009. But in, in 2007, I started that company. 2010, we hit Inc. 500 status, one of the 500 fastest growing companies in the United States. Um, and my mission has always been, it has been uh, since I left the construction industry uh, in 2007, right before the demise of the construction industry, um, to create jobs uh, and to create jobs here locally and to do the best that we could doing that. Um, and then last year, uh, I partnered up with uh, another gentleman who's our vice president of operations at that company, Ty Roden, uh, and uh, we became partners in the gun shop part of the business um, and decided to sell guns online. Uh, that company does a lot of internet marketing. It, it, it seems like a strange mix, but it really isn't. Uh, we're, we're now marketing and selling uh, you know, firearms online, and, and that's a growing business for us, and it's been doing pretty well. Um, on a, on a personal note, I'm married. I've been married for 25 years. Uh, so actually, that's sweet, sweet, Tuna. sweet Tina. Tina, 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 Tina. Sweet yeah, Tina. I told her not to mention, but I've been married for 25 years. This December will be 26. Congratulations, I, by the way. Congrats, thank you. Man. Milestone. Yeah, it is. Uh, th this this coming uh, uh, well, and uh, w and in that uh, wonderful relationship, we have two adult children now, um, Mike and Lauren, and uh, one is uh, 23 and the other is uh, 20, and they're doing really well and. And, and it's good stuff. So I've been a part of the community here for a long time. Long I'm, time. I am a uh, uh, third generation Floridian. Um, my, uh, excuse me, second generation Floridian. My children are third generation Floridians. My mother was actually born in Umatilla when they still had a hospital in Umatilla. Um, she went to Eustis Elementary School and, uh, my, and and her grandkids, my children, went to Eustis Elementary School. It's kind of neat. Yep. Um, so I, got, I grew up in Orlando, then moved back here. My mom grew up here and moved to Orlando. So uh, we switched places, but I've got a real heart for Lake County and been, been around a long time. So anyway, that gives you a little bit about who I am. I'm going to throw it over and, and at Ty, we'll kind of just go around the table here. And, and so who the heck are you, Ty? <laughs> well, uh... I have been, as Ken said, with that company for several years now and uh, as vice president of operations there. The Prior to that, I, too, was in the home building industry with Ken and others, and we watched the whole thing unfold there, and, and as I'm sure Derek will say much the same. <laughs> so, uh, But prior to that, of course, I spent several years in law enforcement here in Lake County, uh, 13 years as uh, director of IT for the Lake County Sheriff's Office. Absolutely. So for me, I've, I've been very vested in the county and seen quite a bit happening here. And uh, I, too, have a lovely wife, been married okay. only a few years, and have a, a little one at home, and uh, two little ones, actually. And so for me, this right here, taking it with the uh, that company and the gun shop side of things, this is a great way for us to uh, speak to the community, and I love it. Absolutely. Derek, go ahead. D. All right. Uh, the liberal. I'm sorry. Yeah. we got to announce. I'm the token <laughs> in the group, I guess. <laughs> the token. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm originally from uh, Wisconsin, moved down to Florida in 2000. Um, that explains I, it. I come it from does. I come from a huge family. My mom was one of 16. Wow. Um, yeah, I have over 200 living relatives on her side of the family. Family reunions Are require awesome. buses. <laughs> uh, we, we have literally rented out college, small colleges before. Yeah, so, yeah it's pretty I could cool. see that. Um, and... Uh, uh, I guess my, my background is in uh, working with kids. I've done youth and children's ministry for a number of years, um, worked in the foster care industry. Uh, none of that paid any good at all. So uh, when, when uh, my best friend and I started a ministry for at-risk kids, uh, it became time to go get a real job that would pay bills because we couldn't do it that way. Um, and I've done a little bit of everything. I've run a college dormitory, worked for construction. I've done carpentry. Um, I've done... Uh, uh, all kinds of uh, internet marketing in, in various different capacities. Um, and I guess, you know, I, I, when people ask me, what do you do now? I say, I'm a firefighter. Ken <laughs> says, Derek, there's a fire. Go put it out. And I go put it out. That's my job. <laughs> yeah, pretty Absolutely. Much. Yeah, you manage a, a good group of people over there. And one of the people that uh, actually you manage and reports to you is Nate, the, the fourth voice oh, yes. uh, at the table. So, Nate, who are you in? Uh, the easiest way to describe it, um, you know, I'm a military brat. Uh, my dad served uh, 26 years, 27 years in the Army 
retired colonel. Um, so I've lived all over uh, not only the United States, but also the world, um, which was a phenomenal experience. Uh, me personally, um, I did eight years in the Marine Corps, Semper Fi. Thank and you then, for your service. Thank you. Thank you for your service. Absolutely. And then I did uh, four years in the Navy as a commissioned officer. Uh, like Derek, I've had so many different jobs over over the years. I've been a police officer. Um, I've worked for... Uh, I didn't know you were a cop. Used to be, yeah. Wow, I did not know Yeah, I worked for uh, new today. America Online in the heyday wow. of uh, America You've Online. You've got when they, mail. <laughs> You sent those CDs to us. Oh, yeah. And uh, the DVDs. Yeah. The relentless CDs. Um, but, yeah, you know, I think that I finally, through the course of the years, um, I think that I've really found a home, um, something that I'm, I've always had an interest in, and that's uh, marketing from a digital perspective. And, uh, you know, glad to be here. Absolutely. Every, every day I'm, I'm learning something new. Well, and, and actually, I think it's kind of interesting, too, um, you're ranked on Twitter as... Yes. Um, on Twitter, for social media and for... Uh, search engine optimization. Yeah, SEO, search engine optimization and social media. I'm in the top 11 people in the world. Wow. Wow. Which wow. Is, actually, huh? uh, a lot of people don't realize that's that's kind of a big that's deal. That's a big deal. It's hard to get that's to. That's a it's huge a, deal. It's a big deal. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and uh, I think you've, uh, I, I, and just going with the politics side, politics side, Derek's outnumbered. We're primarily <laughs> three to one. Ser- we're, we're primarily four to one when we're counting you, James. Yes. Um, but <laughs> still love you, Derek. Seems like a fair fight. It, but, <laughs> oh, 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 oh wow. Um, but uh, I, you know, we're I think we're primarily conservative. Although I will say, Derek, you are a middle of the road uh, uh, liberal. You're would you? I think you self describe as a, a blue dog. Uh, Democrat, uh, and, uh, and but what's interesting to me is I think that uh, um, that uh, Nate just recently learned that he's a libertarian. Yeah, he, that he aligns more with that than anything else. So Adrian Wiley is the man. Yeah, I, yeah, he, he's he's <laughs> he's the man who doesn't have the governor's job. Um, but anyway, um, I. So I wanted to do that. I wanted to give you a chance to get to know who the heck was behind the mics uh, that you're listening to. Or if you're watching us online, you now can put a little personality with the faces that you're seeing uh, and what's going on. Um, Another thing I want to mention, too, is we got a big deal going on for uh, coming up here at the gun shop. We're going to be doing a big uh, thing on uh, Black Friday. We're actually opening early that day. Uh, We usually open our our shop hours are regularly Tuesday through uh, Friday. Um, from noon until 6, and then on Saturday from 9 until 6. But on Black Friday and the holiday season, uh, but Black Friday specifically, we're opening up at 9. We're stretching our hours out to 7 p.m. that yes. on Friday. And then the following Saturday, we'll also be 9 to 7 on that Saturday, which, by the way, I can't help but tell every one of our listeners, Black Friday's cool. Saturday is Small Business Saturday. Do not go to a box store. Go please. to one of our. Please don't go to a box store. Yes. Please, please, support please support local support hometown. a small local business. I don't Absolutely. care if you if you buy from us or if you buy from Peterson's Gun Shop or if you buy from any one of the other Absolutely. places out there. You go do that. Don't go to the big box stores. Right. I'm just going to ask you to do that. It supports local jobs. Absolutely. Uh, we're here to try to create jobs, and we're here to try to you know make a living and be a part of the community. Um, and so uh, on that Saturday, definitely do that. Also, we're going to have a bunch of great sales going on online. As you know, we do a lot of online sales. Uh, Cyber Monday is a big day for us, too. So uh, check us out online and uh, see what's going on there. So enough of the self-promotion and uh, on that. And we're going to kind of move on into our subject matter. But I think we chewed up a little ch- time with, uh, there. That, um, But that's good. Uh, let me give you some numbers again so you can remember them. Uh, uh, if you're calling nationally, 800-437-5121. Locally, 352-787. 9523 again that's 787 WLBE and uh <laughs> if you want to uh check us out online uh go to thatcompany.com/talk uh and see all the different ways that you can connect up with us all right so the, the, the uh, since last week uh a couple of things uh, well first of all let me just say it we said it to Nate but I want to say it yesterday was veterans day and I really appreciate the service of our veterans I yeah. I just can't say Absolutely. enough uh, about that, Amen. when I uh, met with our employees uh, on Monday, we do an empl- uh, a company wide meeting with all of our employees, and we talked about Veterans Day being on Tuesday, um, and 
I, I just can't say enough how, how much I appreciate uh, on the people that, that dared to or were brave enough to take the oath, whether you served uh, in, in uh, harm's way or whether you did one of the thankless, thousands of thankless jobs of support, you know, support within our military training people here stateside. doesn't matter. The fact of the matter is, is that uh, we very, very much appreciate your service. Um, that said, uh, since last week, uh, we had an election. No, it was, we, it was a week before. We didn't talk yeah. about it. Last week we had, what did we talk about last week? We talked a little bit about it. A little There's bit about it. You picked on Taylor. There's more to talk about. We picked, you on, picked Taylor. on Taylor. That's right. Poor kid. Um, it was too fun to pick on Taylor. <laughs> it was uh, funny, but I was feeling bad for him. I wasn't feeling bad for him. We pre-warned him. We told him ahead of time we were going to do it, and he played. <laughs> he played along, and he gave up. He was, he was one of the ones names. feeding you names, huh? Yeah, he was. He was. He was having a good time with that. Well, I think there was one correction, though. You said it was an election. I think it was more of a landslide. Story. Yeah, it, well, it, it was, and and I think there's some things that we haven't seen or didn't really talk about, and that that's been boiling in the media. You know, everything's about the fact that uh, you know the Republicans have taken the Senate, and and that is uh, without a doubt the uh, a big piece of news. I, I wouldn't say uh, by any means that it's the largest piece of news, uh, but it is a big piece of news. Um, but along with that. Uh, the Republicans uh, increased their percentage significantly, uh, and I, from what I understand, too, historically, in the House. Yeah, I think the House is like the largest uh, partisan uh, rule now since since before World War II. So it's it's been a long time since one party has been this dominant. Right. And the question I've got is, is are we in for more of the same? Are we still in gridlock? Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's be honest. There's, there's not that we still have the same key players involved, and there's not going to be suddenly a meeting of the minds between Mitch McConnell and President Obama. It's not going to happen. Um, what I think is is good here is I think that um, the the Republican majority in both of these houses are going to say, listen, we can't shut down the government again. We can't, uh, we can't threaten to default. That's not going to happen because they don't want to bear the the weight of that. So those. Those kind of brinksmanship things that that the parties have put us in in the past, I think, is is not going to happen for the next two years. But is anything constructive going to get done? No. Still frozen. Hey, they they were rewarded for for essentially you know interrupting with with the president's agenda with a majority. I mean, I've, I've, we've got mutual friends who are posting on Facebook. Hey, listen, Republicans, your job is not to compromise. Your job is to keep getting in his way. I mean, I saw this on Facebook this morning. Mm -hmm. I think that was easy. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's going to be a, um, a double-edged sword for the Republican Party, I believe. The reason why I say that is that in two years, if it's still gridlock, if it's still um, not accomplishing things, then I think that uh, the Republican Party is going to get a huge smackdown. Because I think that one of the reasons why people chose to vote the way that they voted this time, in my opinion, is that they're tired of the bickering. They're tired of the uh, not being able to accomplish and get things done. So I think that this is a, an opportunity for them, the Republican Party to actually get stuff done. And if they don't, it's going to be bad. Right. I, I think I have to agree there. There'll be a bit of a pendulum swift, uh, shift backward. Uh, things have sh shifted one way right now. There's a bit of hope there that perhaps this majority will help. But if things do completely gridlock again and they go backward or at least stalemate, I think you're going to see it switch back the other direction. Well, again. let me th let me say this: it's been gridlocked, and the and and we because of that gridlock, I think that's what happened here in the midterms. Um, and now the the question will be: is who will the gridlock be blamed on going forward? Yeah, the blame game. If the right. Republicans can make it look good that uh, the, it's the president standing in the way by passing bills and actually having legislation, which our Congress hasn't done. You know, perhaps the, the, it looks different uh, at the next uh, at the next election. So, hey, let's right. take a break. Yeah, we're gonna take a break. Uh, pay the bills. We'll be right back. Don't go away. So you have a website but need more traffic? We do that. 
You have a Facebook page but need more fans? We do that. You have a store but need more customers? We do that. That company is a full-service ad agency that delivers results for their clients, digital or traditional. Call the agency that gets results for clients like the Orlando Magic, Western Union, and Fairwinds Credit Union. Call 877-467-6694, 877-467-6694, or visit thatcompany.com. In 2012, Google banned the paid advertising of firearms online. That's when that company, a premier internet marketing firm, decided to start an online firearms discount store. With over 20,000 items and nearly 3,000 firearm models available every day, thatgunshop.net is one of the largest discount firearm retailers online. However, the ATF said, if you're going to sell firearms online, you got to have a brick and mortar store too. So if you always wanted to have a big discount firearm retailer in your backyard, then your dreams have come true. A huge selection, great prices, and a really friendly staff. Call us at 352-735-GUNS. That's 352-735-4867. Or stop by on Highway 441 in Mount Dora near the intersection of East Crooked Lake. Or even better, you can shop in your underwear right from home at thatgunshop.net. Please note that customers in their underwear will not be allowed in the actual store. No shipping, no transfer fees, amazing prices, and a friendly staff. Thatgunshop.net. Welcome back. Your dreams were your ticket out. She makes me want to sing. I do. I sing every time you play that, man. I love that. I welcome love that comeback. Back. Welcome back. Um, well, welcome back. And I was just talking to James in the break. We got to record a new uh, gun shop ad because we've got a really cool. Uh, uh, we've got a gunsmith now. Uh, gunsmith. An, an armor. And uh, th this guy, uh, talking about veterans, this guy's got some serious uh, cred when it comes to veteran status. Um, serving in Afghanistan and Iraq, shot 18 times. 18 times. He was wow. Hit. Thankfully, hit. mostly on plates. <laughs> two, times, two times in the flesh. 18 minutes after he arrived in Afghanistan, um, he stuck his head out of a chopper. Uh, a, a round ricocheted off of uh, landing gear and hit him in the head. Oh. Yeah, exactly. And has been shot down some 20 plus times. Yeah. So um, Actually, he was part of the downed aircraft recovery, recovery team. Recovery team. That's what he did. And he went they, and they are the ones that really get shot at a lot. Yeah. People yeah. know you're coming to get a downed pilot. Yeah. I'd say he I mean, ain't never scared. get on a plane with him, though. Yeah. <laughs> well, not I'd in, say he no. ain't scared. He ain't scared. Uh, you know, the thing is, is that uh, part of that thing would be that, and he, he, tells, you he tells you stories that's amazing to listen to. Uh, you know, when they would shoot down a, a helicopter, um, they would, as you would describe, they would leave the pilots alive because they knew if they left the pilots alive, then there were people coming there. If they if they didn't leave the pilots alive, they would do whatever was turn, his phrase was. If he's listening over the gun shop calling and tells me something about, they would just basically rearrange the landscape. Um, and so uh, it's a. Uh, but if you get, if you got work you need done on your gun, you need to go over and see this guy and. Uh, and uh, thank him for his service and uh, and get your gun fixed uh, or get a, a trigger job done or have sights added to it or optics or whatever you need. Or come um, listen to the stories. I that, mean, it's entertaining. Absolutely. Still, right? <laughs> so uh, Sean is over there and we're trying to promote him uh, and, uh, and, and the gunsmithing services. So gunsmithing is now available at that gun shop, which we're very glad to have. Um, so anyway, kind of continuing from where we were, but before I do that again, I've got to remember to give you the guys the numbers. So 800-437-5121, locally 787-9523. You want to figure out how to interact with us online, go to thatcompany.com slash talk. Um, but kind of leaving off where we were uh, talking about uh, there at the end of the segment uh, before we went on break, uh, we were you know, discussing the, that, you know, is it more of the same or not? Uh, but here's an interesting thing that, that I, you know, learned. We talk about gridlock and all that, and that was that uh, the last term of Congress was the most ineffective Congress, I think, in the history of Congress. And that, 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 that's not playing. Statistically, that, that's statistically, statistically true. Statistically very accurate. They passed no legislation to speak of, um, 
and that's why I think there may be a difference here in the sense that um, now that they have control of both the House and the Senate, they can actually pass legislation and they can put it on the president's desk. And now it's going to be up to the president to decide whether or not he's going to veto it. And it's going to look a lot different than the Senate simply not taking up or even discussing legislation pushed forth by the House as in, as has happened in the past. Right. right. I mean, it's but just. You've still got a filibuster in the Senate. Yeah. And you've still got a veto from the, the Oval Office. Absolutely. There's got to be a meeting of the minds if anything's going to get passed. I, I would agree. Um, but it's also going to be a perception of the American people who's trying versus who's who's obstructing. And right now we just came off of a period of time which quite candidly I thought that the Republicans were in the obstruction role. That the, I don't know if that was seen that way. I think that the Republicans did a very good job in the midterms here of laying the blame on Obama and doing and, and, and getting the message out there so much so that the Democratic candidates that were out there uh, divorced themselves from Obama. They didn't even right. there were there were the whole things of people not wanting to admit that they voted for Obama. I mean, it, it the Obama became such a plague to the Democrats uh, that it's ugly. The question is whether or not that the Republicans, from a optics pers uh, uh, you know standpoint. Um, can continue to make Obama the plague and lay that with the Democrats as a whole because he's the, the figurehead for the Democratic Party. Well, the frustration levels that the public has with the president, with both chambers of Congress, are at historic highs for Congress and pretty darn close for the president. And it, this this was not a or, case of... We're stark lows. <laughs> yeah, right. right. <laughs> uh, this is not a case of, of people going, gosh, I'm going to go vote Republican. This was a case of people not voting Democrat. The number the number of Democrats who stayed home was off the charts, and that's more than anything why why it was such a landslide. We, I think. we had such a huge uh, 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 lack of participation, lack of enthusiasm, lack of right. everything. And and you and and you think that's because Democrats stayed home? <clears throat> well, I think so. I mean, the this is a 39 percent nationwide turnout rate, which is abysmal. It, I mean, really bad. Other countries of the world look at us and go. And you say you're a democracy? I mean, it's really, really bad. Right. And, you know, statistically, when you look at the statistics, the, the two groups that stayed home the most compared to recent elections was the Hispanic vote, which was well under where it should be, and the, the young voters. Young voters did not show up in this election at all compared to where they were two years ago or six years ago. It's not even close. The Hispanic voters and the young voters. Mm -hmm. um, interesting. You know, one of the things that we were talking about uh, as we kind of uh, – uh, prepared for, uh, you know, this this show this week was that uh, uh, the the turnout was so incredibly low. Um, I mean, it's shameful to me. On it. let me just say a little segue there. I, I think it's it's just absolutely shameful. Um, I everybody I spoke with, I encouraged to vote and told them that they have no reason to complain whatsoever if they don't vote. True. Um, you, you can't be disenfranchised from or or so unhappy with what you're seeing and then go but i'm gonna stay home that's not how you change it that's not how you affect the change that's not how you you know fix it fixing it is not staying home um but one of the things we looked at because the the congress and we talked about because the congress was so the last the session of congress was so um do nothingness uh that we were looking at the statistics of of what happens at the local level and the local level is really where the law, I think, and I don't know the numbers exactly, but I'm going to give you the rough ones as I understand them. Uh, Congress passed something like 200 and some pieces of legislation total. Yeah. Um, while at the local level, the state legislatures um, uh, passed over 24,000 pieces of legislation. So local uh, and or state level is has a serious impact and if you're not going to show up to vote then you're not going to have a voice in where all the laws really are getting passed which is at the state levels right and and in addition to that you think about what are some of the hot button issues those are actually state issues i mean you talk about capital punishment that's done by states the federal government hardly executes anybody um the the gay marriage issue that's mostly be being determined on a state-by-state -state basis. Mm -hmm. You talk about the mar marijuana issue. Um, that's a state-by-state -state basis. Uh, so much of Although the Although there is a federal law regarding 
that and we had the judicial system involved in determining whether Absolutely. states can do the gay marriage thing. But yeah, a, a, without a doubt, um, our, the the things that we talk about a lot, you know, regardless of where you come down on it, education, that's primarily a state and, and largely a local issue. Um, a lot of the things in our day to day life, those are those are state and local issues. And if you're not voting. Well, the big thing to me was I looked at the stats as far as number of votes and what it took in some of these areas. And, you know, if a few more people would have shown up, it may not have been the same result. Right. What it really comes down to is it really matters at a state and local level what your vote is. It does. Your votes count so much more there, too, because it takes less votes and it takes less uh, numbers to, to overtake it where you may look at, uh, although the governor's race in Florida was exceptionally tight, um, you know, the uh, the local vote there can swing that and change that. Right. Um, but when you get down to, uh, you know, your state legislatures, uh, your state representative and your state senate uh, members, uh, those those folks don't, it, you know, a vote can make a difference uh, in that in those in those uh, campaigns. Uh, and then obviously when you get down into uh, hyper local stuff, your county commission and whatnot, those votes become incredibly important we're we're, right. we're measuring, measuring them in the thousands and yeah, differences of votes yeah is, is a huge percentage yeah absolutely just a absolutely monstrous difference um another thing that we were talking about too and that we have a huge well i wouldn't say huge but we have a differing a difference of, of opinions here uh is on the uh, voter id laws absolutely um and I'll, I'll just i'll turn the floor over to you uh, uh our, our 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 beloved dem um <laughs> What's wrong? What is wrong with requiring somebody to? Pr I'll, I'll, let me let me let me lay the land. I totally understand that it's a constitutional right to vote. Good, mm -hmm. uh, it is our right to vote. Um, I. But what I don't understand is why is it a problem to require an individual to prove? Because the Constitution also says you have to be an American citizen to prove that you are indeed an American citizen if you're going to vote. I don't think it's a problem that you have to prove it. I think if the problem is the hoops they're making people jump through to do that. It it is a photo ridiculous. ID. Ridiculous. A photo ID that that meets their requirements. It's ridiculous that that's that's what has to happen in order for you to go vote. The reality is that that this is kind of a, a smokescreen. The the notion that there's all kinds of and this is called impersonation fraud, voter impersonation fraud, where you're going to go and pretend you're somebody else, is very very small. I'm not saying that no fraud exists, and I'm not saying that any fraud is okay. But if you're serious about tackling this issue, you're not worried about voter impersonation. There's all kinds of other issues you're, you're worried about. What this does do is it disenfranchises all kinds of people who don't have that. According to the, the most recent statistic that I read, it's estimated that more than 21 million Americans do not have government-issued photo ID that would work to allow them to vote. Don't 20, have a driver's license? One, don't have a driver's license. Or a state ID. Or a state-issued ID. Or those things are expired or they're suspended. Um, these things, they don't work. And you're talking about taking 21 million potential voters out of the pool. That yeah. changes now, everything. Now you now, see the numbers you were throwing around yesterday and the numbers you're throwing around today are a little different. So <laughs> today's numbers are there are 21 million total nationwide people, people not voters, because who knows if any of those are registered anyway. So they could be a large chunk of people that never registered to vote. That's possible. Absolutely. So there might be one million people total that are actually affected. I think that would be, that would be really, really outside the, uh, the norm. In okay. Wisconsin, which this, is, this battle is taking place primarily in two states this, in this election cycle. That's Texas and Wisconsin. In Wisconsin, they estimated there were 500. Texas, who's on the, uh, let me clarify, Texas the, that has a border with uh, Mexico. Yeah. That's porous, right? We got no wall or anything. Mm -hmm. People just come in when they so Mexicans can vote in our elections. That would be a bad idea. But but they want IDs for people. But to I prove don't think who they are. I don't think that you that you disenfranchise tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of people in order to catch a small number of people that may be committing a crime. Who wants an illegal and, to vote? Well, I'm not going to go with an illegal to vote. I'm going to just say we just had the case where we just made the statement that uh, that the local votes are incredibly important. I, I'm sorry, but one one vote that is uh, uh, an illegal vote or an impersonated vote or a fraudulent vote, let's just call that, uh, is too many. I, I would agree with that, but I'm not going to throw away 500,000 votes to catch one. In Wisconsin, there were, there were, in the last election, four 
Okay, not not this most recent one, the, the one before that. Four voter impersonation cases. They, that they disenfranchised that they, 500,000 that they people. caught that and they i caught. Let, let, let's just go with that so 60% of the people in the in this election didn't vote right what was the last one was it was it 50% didn't it was vote? A, we had a little better than 50% turnout so yeah. uh, we had you know 48 percent of people didn't vote okay. so i got a one in two chance that uh, uh that i could vote for someone and they would have no idea that i voted for them yeah and realistically i mean i'm, I'm willing to and play we caught that game. four i'm willing to play that game let's yeah. say that you're really smart yeah okay let's say that you that you know how to to work the system and, and you narrow it down it's it's a one in a hundred chance that you get caught and actually 400 people did that are you telling me that that you're willing to throw away the votes of 500,000 citizens with a legal right to vote. I'm not throwing away 500,000 votes. I'm only saying that they have to go and get an ID. But some of them can't. How, many, what? many, many of them can't. How, how, why is it they can't? Why is it that they can't? Yeah, give us reasons why they can't get IDs. Okay. The the most common ones... I didn't have a problem getting an ID. Really? Because I, I didn't tell have you, a problem I, getting an ID. Here in Florida, when I moved down to Florida in 2000, I had to go to the DMV seven times before I could get my ID. Again, I see you didn't read times. the list, but that's okay. No, I did read the list, and right, every right. time I went there, they changed it. We have people we work <laughs> with. I, I want to check, I wanna check every, that, that they every, changed the, they changed every, the voter identification, excuse me, the driver's license identification thing seven times every time in that 2000. I went they to, didn't change Every it. time I went to the DMV, they gave me different rules of what to follow. We have people we work with right now right. who cannot get IDs at the DMV and they've gone and spent hours there because there's a discrepancy between their documents, between mm -hmm. birth certificates, maiden names, married names, things so like that. So you're saying that that exists 500,000 times? Because I'm, you're saying I'm throwing alone. out 500,000 votes. Alone. Yep. So all 500,000 of them have a problem getting their IDs. Absolutely. I don't agree. I think five, I think that you've got 400,000 of them are just too lazy. You, you can not agree all you want. It doesn't <laughs> change the facts. Well, well tell me the facts. That you got five. You got 500,000 people that are saying that they cannot get IDs. That's right. They can't get IDs. All They're, right. Uh, Let me clarify. So which what segment of the population is this? This, this is primarily coming from a few different groups. Okay. I mean, the, the, ob, the most obvious one is young folks, people who are 18, 19. Who can't get IDs? Who don't have driver's license. How, who are, who they are can't get IDs. They can't get them. They, they, they're <laughs> at 18 or 19 at this age, costs, 21st on, century. It costs you money to go get an ID. Oh, okay. And, and these folks are, are, don't have the money to go and get an ID. And so they, at the age of 18, 19, don't get to vote because they don't have a driver's license. Okay, so there you are, think that's a large chunk of young people. I think, I think that's the obvious segment. But the largest chunk is probably not them. The largest chunk is actually really older voters because you've got lots and lots of folks out there who were born in a time when, uh, you know, paperwork was not quite as good, particularly in poor areas and in, in minority areas. And, and these folks are not getting the opportunity because their birth certificate screwed up. There's a typo on their birth certificate or their birth certificate got lost or, or okay. something. But in, in the and case those of, folks cannot legally get IDs. In the, in the case like that, there are situations where they can actually petition whether it's a court or some type of system to remedy it, it just takes time. It we'll, takes we'll get that when we get back from the break. I'll show you. <laughs> yeah. All right. Let's talk about that when we get on the break. Let's pay the bills, James. Let's do it. Let's take a break. We'll, we'll be, be right, right back. back. Don't go away. So I've been I've been anxious to answer this question. All right, so here here's here's some of the examples of what we're talking about, guys. Margarita Lara, seventy seven year old. That's one. I'm sorry, you got to give me an example of five hundred thousand people, not one. <laughs> well, uh, that would make the show really long. Okay. Um, he got five hundred thousand people. Seventy seven year old Hispanic retiree from Sebastian, Texas. Right. He's been trying to attempt to locate his birth certificate for more than twenty 
years. Does he know where he was, he was born? Yes. He was born on a farm ranch in Cameron County, Texas. With the help of his daughter, he's visited three offices in multiple counties trying to get his certificate. Mr. Lara later paid a $22 search fee to the Texas Department of State Health Services to, to confirm what he already knew, which at his birth was never registered. Why? Because if you were born in that era and you were born in some of these poor communities in the South in particular, but anywhere where, where there was a little bit of racial undertone, these things didn't happen. So, okay. when you said but the point retiring, is, hold on. but wait, 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 no, let me, hold on, let me, let me point out something else. Mm -hmm. no. I, and I appreciate, but I'm going to be cynical here. He's a liar. He came across the Rio Grande and he came in from Mexico. He was not born here and he can't prove that he was born here. And I'm sorry, but he can't prove he's born here. He can't prove he's an American citizen. I, it sucks. But how do you, how do you segregate out those that are lying? that aren't that that are not american citizens and those that are how do you do it the, the how way do you that, do it the, there are many many ways that you can prove that you're an american citizen okay then photo that, id is not a major well, part of that okay, okay. and and if okay. i've got a social an security ID card of some sort if i've got a social security card shouldn't that count uh, a social security card I, i'm not going to say that a social security card can't count as it, part of it it doesn't count now well I, I'm, if i have if i well, have let, let me clarify what okay. the problem with this so that's no, okay I, let me clarify what my issue is on a social security card I, I think that a social security card absolutely has some value and there's some benefit there no doubt but the problem is is that you could give me your social security right card right now and nobody would know that i'm not derek the or yeah no, i'm not derek i'm not nate i'm not ty there's no way to know that because the social security card doesn't have my have your picture on it. See, here's here's why I think that that argument is flawed. Um, you cannot just walk off the street into the Social Security Administration and get a card. You have to have some type of documentation. But right? in the case of this gentleman, he's never had one. He has a social security card. He's worked in this country his entire life. He How can't he, legally work in this country. He, he can't he, legally he has work a in this country. Security card. But he can't legally work in the country. Let me explain because under under the the law here. You have to fill out an I-9, and an I-9 requires a photo ID. And if you don't fill out an but, I-9, you're not legally working, the way so it's not legally used working. To, the, way we, the hoops we used to have to jump through to get photo IDs are vastly different than they are in the post-911 world. True that. It was much easier. And let me ask you this. If I've got an ID that's expired or that's, um, that's suspended, whether it's a passport, a military ID, <clears throat> a driver's license, my identity hasn't changed. That should still work. That doesn't work. When they're saying, oh, I'm sorry, we have a cases of people whose licenses have been suspended because of unpaid parking tickets that weren't allowed to vote. Is this where we're going? This, what's happening here is it's the people on the fringe. It's the people who are already slipping through the cracks of the system. And what we're saying is, since you can't ride with the mainstream of what's going on in this country, we're going to take away your vote. That's what this is really all about. If people were serious about wanting to take care of fraud, they would look where the fraud is. The fraud happens with absentee ballots. The fraud happens when we're, when we're purging voter rolls. And we know we've got a couple hundred people in here that we need to get rid of, but we've got 10,000 people on this roll. We're going to knock all 10,000 of them out. That's where fraud's happening. Fraud's happening when we turn in 20,000 um, uh, registrations to small rural counties in Georgia and only 10,000 of them ever make it in the system because 10,000 of them go missing, primarily from poor areas. That's where the big fraud is going on. This is not about fraud. This is about something else. This is about those people who are falling through the cracks and not giving them their voice. You get a photo ID, by the way, you're, you're talking, and I'm not trying to be um, uh, a flip here, but you, you get a photo ID, you're, you're talking about... Uh, uh, primarily poor. You're also talking about, and I'm, and I get where you're coming from. By the way, let me make that clear. Um, primarily poor, and you're talking about the uh, those that are in certain ethnic groups that are primarily affected by this, and young people too. Yeah, and young people. I, I got an art. I, I, well, I'll spin back on the young people, and I'll let you even. Nate, yeah. You have something to say about the young people, but <laughs> I, I'm just going to say that you also are talking about a segment of the population that is also classically. Um, the most incarcerated, uh, and when they uh, and I'm talking about when they commit a felony, they can't vote. I'm talking about they just went to jail, um, and they get a photo ID there. We can identify them, and a, a large percentage of them already have photo IDs right now, and uh, and so that in that particular segment and population. So what are you saying? I'm saying they've got a photo ID. So, <laughs> you know, I'm not so sure that the entire, again, we can get into anecdotal evidence. I don't know that we have 
uh, good numbers uh, across the board on how many uh, uh, who's actually being affected. And I'm going to say to legally have a job, you have to have a photo ID to open a bank account. You have to have a photo ID um, to to take state benefits welfare. You have to have a photo ID. So these people are a either. I mean, they're a, either. Yeah, a lot of them are like I'm saying they're through. How many how many homeless people do you think have a current photo ID? Very few. There, there are 10 million households in this country that do not have a bank account. Not 10 million people, 10 million households. There's lots and lots of people falling through the cracks. And we, we need to give them a chance to have their voice heard. And that's what this is about. This is not about, about fraud. This is, I want to read you a quote from, and this is a Reagan appointed uh, justice who was the, in the very first case that came up in Indiana, he voted with the majority and said, voter ID laws are okay. He's completely changed his position particularly this is about the Wisconsin case. There's a compelling evidence that voter impersonation fraud is essentially non-existent in Wisconsin, a mere fig leaf for efforts to disenfranchise voters. Evidence of voter fraud is downright goofy, if not paranoid, such as the non-existent buses that, according to the True Vote movement, transport foreigners and reservation Indians to polling places. He implies that there's a number of conservative states that are trying to make it difficult for people to vote who are outside of the mainstream, whether because of poverty, race, or problems with the English language. You know, obviously, uh, we all have very strong opinions about this. Leesburg, I would love for you guys to give us a call, chime in, and let us know. Now, Derek, you brought up a point um, about young people. Okay, and, I, and it, there, here's an interesting take on, on what I think. Would you say that the, the vast majority, and, and when I say a number, I'll say 90% of 18 and 19-year-olds, do they have a cell phone? Uh, no. Oh, you don't think so? Well, 80 percent, yeah. I would I would not say ninety percent. No. Okay, so mm. they buy a cell phone. They're paying their monthly bills or or whatever, but they're not they, fiscally responsible. You, one of the arguments that you said was that they don't have money. Okay, so they have money to to do uh, luxury type things like have a cell phone, but they won't go to DMV to get a photo ID, not even a driver's license, but just something that identifies who they are. Do you, if, if if you don't have another reason for an ID. Besides that, do you do you do you have to pay to vote? We got rid of poll taxes a uh, long time ago. I'm not going to say that if we're going to require a photo ID that the states uh, along with that. Let me let me let me. I'll concede a couple of things to you on the photo on the photo ID piece. Uh, first of all, I think that it would be absolutely appropriate uh, if we're going to pass that to make uh, a photo ID available for free for every individual that wants one unless they lose it and then they got to pay for the replacement. They That's need to be reasonable. responsible. Yeah. Um, they can, you know, during its expiration period, if it's, it's going to be survived for five years, then they get one every five years that they can get for free. And if they lose it, then it's on them. Um, I'll, I'll give, I'll, I'll, I'll say that, that that would be a reasonable compromise in that situation, but it's not a compromise. It says we don't need but, photo IDs. But Sec the, second, let me, let me give you two come two. The, the second one that I would concede and agree with would be that we would allow a ramp up period in any state that does that. That basically says, hey, next election's two years from now. You got two years to get your stuff straightened out. It's going to take some effort from you. I understand that it's a it's your it's your right. Uh, it's also your responsibility uh, well, along with that right. It, that right only belongs to American citizens. And you need to be able to prove that you're an American citizen. And if you can't, I'm sorry that you got caught up in it, but you can't. I can't allow you that got caught up in that mistake for what happened to you to allow, if it was, if we do not have an identification process, to allow the potential for fraud to exist. I, I, I can agree with some of what you're saying there. I just want to, I want to shift the onus from the individual to, hey, if you're the state that's going to require this, then you need to provide it. Because... There, there's all kinds of burdens. If, if, if my birth certificate screwed up, it's not because I did anything wrong. I was an infant. The state screwed up, not me. The state, it's the state's job to get that right. There are parts of Texas where you have to drive 100 miles to go to the DMV, 100 miles each way. If you have a situation like me where you have to go seven times, you're not getting an ID. <laughs> There are parts of Wisconsin, and I live Tanya, there, they remember. They didn't change it seven times in 2000. They, I'll get you that data. They, you didn't read the list. They're, they're, <laughs> well, they didn't give me the list. They told me what to bring, and it's every time lying. they told me, it was wrong. Uh, between where, where in Wisconsin, and remember, I live there, the, the DMV is open 10 to 4 one day a week. So if you're a working person, you essentially are stuck. You, you're either well, gonna, without you know, a photo ID, you can't legally work. 
So you can't be no, a work. No. You can't use that claim because without a photo ID, you can't do a I nine and you can't legally work. So you're if you're a working person, you're working illegally. Go get your ID. Unless, we got a yeah, caller. Unless, Sorry, you can't tell that, but we got a caller behind us. I want to let him. Well, in. We got Sal on the line. Sal, go ahead. Sal. Yeah, I I lived in a major city in a state up north, and I have seen rampant, uh, just illegal actions going on. You know, just corruption in right. voting. I, I mean, people get paid. Uh, I was never a party to it, but I saw it going on. And what new people were paid to vote for people who died that year but weren't going to show up. People were paid to vote multiple times. And did you report that? Uh, you, you don't understand. The people you need to report it to are part of the corruption. You got a point there, Sal. Okay. Um, yeah, that, that and, you're and, saying that product exists. If somebody says, is losing their license or and and their identification because they parked um, illegally. illegally, then they should pay, I think, for their parking tickets. So and and they shouldn't park illegally in the first place. I, I agree with all that, but you think they shouldn't vote? But but I I'm telling you, corruption is rampant. There are thousands and thousands of votes that are placed that are not valid. Well, I, mean, I got to tell you, every study that's been done on this says you're wrong. It yeah, says, well, we're well. tracking all this. <laughs> Who's doing the study? And, yeah, that's and the question. That's the issue, too. And, and the reality is, if you were going to try and steal an election, if that was your objective, this would not be a good way to do it. If we're going to oh, a nation... You, you know what? You, you live in an imaginary world. <laughs> no, let, me, uh, and, let, and, let me bring and, a little light to yours. You thought See, I was being tough the, on him. The... <laughs> If, if you were going to do it, it would make sense to try it with, with maybe something like uh, absentee ballots, or it makes make sense to try and purge people from the rolls. You can have a big swing. If you're talking about an individual going from... Well, well look, I, place I'm just telling you place. what I saw. His and, own personal and, and, experience. And, and, and right. what I knew of. People, right. were, people were actually paid to do, right. you know... To, that's an interesting thing when he talks about people who are paid, and and, the, and it was something that came up here recently, now, not to spin off the topic and, and you, too much. You but. can't report it because the people you would report it to, the, the people who are policing the polls are, are corrupt. Right. And, and they just, this is just the way, uh, you, you know, uh, well, anyway. So, so anyway, there, hey, there's just twice? a side of this you're not seeing, right. and, and I just wanted to tell you that they're, you know, hey Sal, we appreciate the call for day. sure, and you participating. That's excellent. So, uh, but here's, here's here's my question. Yeah. Okay. I'm trying to. Obviously, we know that we have an issue. We have a problem. And uh, what is the resolution? What's how can we solve it? What about this approach? And I think it's very pragmatic. Um, what about when you get a social security card? You have to have some type of documentation. What if they put a photo? What if they put a picture on social security? Card? I think, that's I think interesting. That's a good next uh, uh, step. There's an interesting, uh, there's a solution to it. I think, uh, you know, my concern is we talked about the local stuff. We talked about how how little votes it takes to swing a local raise, mm -hmm. how much legislation is actually happening at the local level, mm -hmm. how much of our laws are going on there. Uh, voter fraud, even one vote is too many, is too many but votes. But at the same time, even allowing a handful of people to not vote that should be able to is a handful that's I, too many. I agree. I, I, I don't want people not to vote. At the same time, I don't want people that shouldn't be voting voting. Right. And this really, I, I think to some degree, we're looking at two separate issues here, folks. The ability for people to identify themselves to the system. I mean, there's more than just voting that is affected by them not having an ID. Right. The, the proof of an American citizen has to happen in some fashion to have valid vote, period. So the issue of the ID, whether the state offers free IDs, which has come up, or any other piece thereof, they still have other issues because of the ID that but need to be let me solved. Ask you they should be segregated. Ty, pull issue. out, pull out your driver's license and show me where it says you're an American citizen on your driver's license. Uh, I understand that. It doesn't. It doesn't necessarily say you're an American citizen That's on your not driver's the proof. license. Yeah. All right, guys. It's been a fun week and. Uh, uh, a, a very interesting set of conversations. We're going to be back at it again next week. Join us next Wednesday. Thanks to our caller. I appreciate arguing yes. with you. Thank you, buddy. Absolutely. <laughs> and uh, we look forward to a great week, uh, and we'll miss you until then. See you then. Hey, uh, didn't, didn't Sal win something today? for Yeah, yeah Sal. Bear Sal. Oh, well, you know, we forgot to announce that. We we got Solar Bear tickets for you, Sal. If you want them, uh, call, call back in and talk to or just stop in at uh, WLBE and pick them up. We've got a pair of Solar Bear tickets for you. Have there a great you go. Day. Thanks, guys. Talk to you next week.